So I guess we'll file this video under game devlog as well. Some of you were asking me, well, how's my game going? And the blunt answer is, well, there is no game at the moment. I've just been getting deeper into game engines, specifically Godot. And there's quite a lot to unpack. Getting into this thing was at face value, not very apparent and simple, but I fortunately found some good YouTube tutorials online. And uh, for the past two something weeks, I've just been going through tutorial after tutorial, getting used to the very basic stuff, getting more comfortable with the environment. And uh, in the last video, I showed you that scene, that nature scene with the capsule walking around with some trees and some grass. Well, recently I started playing a little bit more with animations. And I imported these animation models from uh, Mixamo and then prototyping out some simple levels with the tools that Godot gives you. This process is called gray boxing. It's where you take a bunch of very basic primitive shapes and then lay out the kind of like the general layout of what the level is going to look like. And playing a lot more with the animation blender. Here's what's called the blend space 2D graph, where you can have the different animations um, at different points here on the axis. And then by moving between them, you can actually transition quite smoothly. And uh, I did finally program in a, um, a very basic third person controller. This is a model also taken off of uh, Mixamo. Yeah, this is the secret character in Metal Gear Solid. He's the brother of, um, what's that guy's name? Uh, Liquid Octopus, Octopus Revolver, Revolving Octagon. Uh, Liquid Ocelot, that's it. You use the mouse to rotate the camera around and you use the WASD keys to move the character forward, strafe left and right. Here is that same scene that I showed you before with all the grass and trees and such. Um, I updated the character, uh, number one, the mesh, to create this little capsule dude with the glasses and a halo and a backpack. These little balls are the spring arms of the camera controller. Here I added the grass back in and here are the trees and the water. I also added these cliffs, these rocky cliffs in the background. So how it moves is you use the arrow keys to move up, down, left, right, and uh, you can control the camera this way, right? And just a uh, basic walking sim. And the grass does sway with the wind. There's uh, a couple of butterflies fluttering around with their path tracing. The water is sort of moving. <laughs> There's some uh, particle effects with the leaves falling from the trees. So now with enough knowledge of the game engine and by no means am I claiming to be some kind of an expert, I'm still learning. Uh, I think all game developers are constantly learning. I'm trying to day by day learn one new concept of the game engine and how to use all of its various tools to achieve certain effects. I did start planning out uh, a very simple game. This is the game loop, how it kind of works overall. Here's for the player and here's for the, the enemy. For those of you who are familiar with the little mini game from Nier Automata, it sort of works like that. You just kill these very basic shapes that are chasing after you and firing bullets at you. And then the whole point of it is to destroy this core logic virus thing. And by doing so, you save the life of your Android sister or something like that. This is not a game development channel, as I said before, but I'll post updates on my progress. You'd be surprised how much you can learn just by executing on a simple, quote unquote, simple game like this. And some of you were asking, well, if you are able to get a third person controller type of setup going, why don't you create the more of like a Resident Evil 7 type of thing? The most common mistake I've seen, not just with game development, but with any craft, and I totally understand this, you've been inspired by Red Dead Redemption 2 and all these games you've played, and you want to create like the next big thing. Rather than doing one simple thing extremely well, what a lot of newbies will do instead is that they'll try to execute on something more complicated, but fall short on virtually every single front. So I guess that would be my ultimate advice. I think you'll have a lot more success at whatever you're doing, but game development in this specific case, if you focus on something very basic and execute the hell out of it, design a basic game loop that goes deep. The engagement is deep as opposed to casting your net wide and ultimately falling short on a bunch of different fronts.